Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, and I'm back, all in one piece. Well, for the most part, a uh, steaming bowl of pho burned off my beard. That looks delicious. But it was totally worth it. In case you guys didn't know, I went on an extremely grueling and ill-advised adventure across Vietnam on dirt bikes with American Ben. Dude. <laughs> While on the plane back to the States, I had plenty of time to reflect about my trip, 17 hours to be exact. I asked myself why I'm only seeking adventure. Am I running away from something? Why am I the way I am? Such a strange individual. I thought about my childhood. I thought about Star Wars, Han Solo's deflection of emotion and responsibility, and Luke's steadfast adherence to good even before he knew what a Jedi was. I began seeing things merge into a clearer picture, and I began developing a video for Generation Tech. You see, growing up, Star Wars and the expanded universe played a huge part in my childhood development. Little did I know, the characters and ideas I liked in the franchise also helped subconsciously develop my own personality. Growing up, I longed to have my own rebellion, fight my own Death Star. In many ways, Star Wars is responsible for the adult, or man-child, or Whatever the hell you guys see sitting in front of your camera right now with no pants on today. And in order to explain to you guys what kind of person I am, I'm gonna boil down the lessons I learned from Star Wars into five bullet points. Yoda once told Luke to do or do not. There is no try. It was a quick, simple line to encourage Luke to fully embrace his training. The young Jedi was having problems connecting with the Force. For me, this line has always had a more direct and literal meaning. It means to take action and don't let the world pass you by while you hesitate and contemplate. It means approach that girl you really like even though it's totally forbidden for you guys to get it on. It means following your lifelong dream of running a floating city above a gas giant despite how many zoning regulations you're probably breaking. It means not questioning physics or common sense and attempting to revert a ship from hyperspace to real space within a planet's atmosphere. Sometimes it's just better to go ahead and do things without thinking. Sure, you might lose a limb or two. But you'll have become wiser if you survive. The thing about these kind of people who don't think twice before leaping into a situation is they'll have failed a lot more than the average person. Trust me, I know from first-hand experience. And if they're lucky enough to have lived through all of their bad decisions, they'll come out on the other end with a life full of lessons and confidence that no matter what the galaxy throws at them, they'll be able to adapt. So when something as unexpected as Order 66 happens, if anyone's gonna survive, it's probably going to be them. Now, I'm not saying that we should all go outside and start running around in circles and doing crazy things without thinking about the consequences of our actions, because that's how the world will end. Instead, I'm asking you to maybe take one of your dreams, your childhood dreams, whether it be finally buying that motorcycle or taking that class in video game design or RKOing your asshole boss, and do it. Well, except for the last thing. RKOing someone is not a martial arts move, it's just murder. The interesting thing about riding a motorcycle is there is a fine line between the operator's skill level and their confidence level. If one skill is too low and their confidence is too high, they might get into trouble by riding beyond their ability. At the same time, that high confidence level might prevent you from locking up in an emergency situation and keep you cool-headed long enough to get yourself out of a tricky situation. I think the same thing could probably be said about piloting a starship. One of Han Solo's favorite responses to C-3PO when he gives him the odds is... What? Never tell me the odds. It's a part of a philosophy that believes that knowing what obstacles in your future is just a distraction from the most important thing, which is being able to run your own race in the most efficient way. It's this racehorse with blinders mentality and intense focus that allows Han Solo to survive encounter after encounter, whether on the battlefield or in space. Simply put, when encountering a difficult situation, it's pointless and in some ways harmful to constantly remind oneself of the odds. The Rebellion strategy was never to focus on systems won or Star Destroyers vanquished. Sure, occasionally had tactical targets like the Death Star that threatened the entire organization's survival, but its leaders knew that the Rebellion could never match the Empire's might in ships and manpower and win a conventional war. The Rebellion was all about building hope in the galaxy, hope that the galaxy's populace would awaken and join the ranks of the Rebellion. 
That was always the plan, to rot the empire from within instead of trying to chisel away its hardened shell. It's why rebellion leaders like Mon Mothma prevailed while more militaristic individuals like Saul Guerrero perished. So consumed by hate and arrogance, Saul believed that his terrorist organization could single-handedly do enough damage to take out the Empire by itself. But in reality, the massive civilian casualties his organization created hurt the cause and helped the Empire far more than he ever realized. There's always a smarter and less direct way to solve a problem. Sometimes you don't have to defeat your invincible enemy. You just have to show the world that they can bleed. As a young boy, I was caught up in the propaganda of the Jedi, the Rebellion, and the New Republic. I supported them in their war against evil, the Empire, the Separatist Alliance, and the Sith. But naturally, as I grew older, I realized just how complex and intricate the politics and conflicts in the Star Wars galaxy were. I began seeing the various factions in Star Wars not as just good or evil, but simply points on many different spectrums of economic, political, military, and religious systems. The Republic was a place where many different factions had an opportunity to voice their concerns as long as they weren't in the Outer Rim. The Empire was able to consolidate all the galaxy's resources and manpowers to achieve greatness, but used it to create things like the Death Star. The Separatists fielded mighty armies of droids that were cheap to produce and reduced civilian casualties until they started shooting them. Each faction had its strengths and weaknesses and tons of lessons that we could learn from. And then there was the Sith and the Jedi destined to be mortal enemies until the end of time. However, both had pieces of the greater puzzle that was the Force. If only they could stop killing each other for one moment to learn from each other, maybe they would become whole once again. And that is perhaps Star Wars' greatest lesson, the most precious thing it has to offer us. We as observers of their galaxy, detached from allegiance to any side, can really see how futile all the fighting is. A republic crumbles, only to be replaced by an empire, which falls once again replaced by a fledgling republic, and so the cycle continues. It's during these periods rife with conflict, during transitions of power, that the most life is lost, the most innocence is shattered. If only more of us could step back from the violence that plagues our own planet, perhaps we could choose our battles in a much wiser way. What really destroyed the Jedi Order? Was it a Sith Lord and his apprentices scheming from the shadows, or was it centuries of inactivity and a lack of a true opponent to fight? Like a sword that remained sheathed, the Jedi Order became dull over time, without use, unable to even sense the growing darkness that surrounded it. After all, how does one sense darkness when no one has seen it in such a long time? And during its many centuries of peace, the Jedi Order became more strict and rigid in its teachings, more afraid of allowing its students to be corrupted by the dark side of the Force, yet with no real way to show them what the dark side of the Force actually was. Although many of the more powerful and wise Jedi sensed things were going down the wrong path, it was already too late when the Jedi Council finally started beginning to understand what was happening in the galaxy around them. In the Jedi Order's last days, the corruption had sowed itself so deeply into the Order that the Jedi replaced their own values and directives with those of the Republic's. They pushed aside those who tried to think outside the box and save the Order, and clung to their decaying system of belief like fearful children. They marched towards certain death for some mediocre cause as slaves directing other slaves, bred like lambs for the slaughter. And when the Sith finally came to them, they were completely unprepared. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? That was Darth Bane's greatest victory, to convince the Jedi that the Sith were truly gone, to ease them into centuries and centuries of complacency. Each new generation of Jedi became weaker as the years went on. Without the Sith to constantly test their mettle and push them to their limits, the Jedi failed in their own little protective bubble of peace. It's a lesson we should all be wary of. A little bit of rest and relaxation is something everyone needs. But if we become lazy, complacent, unhappy, and bored, perhaps we need to awaken our senses and get the blood flying once again. The best works of art created by man force us to contemplate the ideas being presented to us. The true masterpieces, however, sees us adopting these ideas into our own lives. There are hundreds of lessons to be learned from Star Wars, and I'm sure I've missed many. Let me know in the sections below what your favorite lessons from Star Wars are, and don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. Also, a special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. It's good to be back, and I'm sorry if I haven't answered everyone's messages. I've just kind of disconnected from everyone. I needed a break after the crazy release of The Last Jedi, but now I'm back. 
Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.